welcome Mike Stanley. Yeah, thank you for that. That applause feels so good. You have no idea how validating that is as a comedian to walk up here and immediately get, like, get applause. It's, it, do you guys get applause at your job? Anybody? No, fucking quit immediately. It's the best, my old job used to applaud me. It was a little bit different though. I would walk in and they would be like, oh, Mike's here, everybody. Oh, look, Mike finally fucking showed up. Four hours late, drunk, again. Thank you so much for being here, Mike. And that's why I no longer manage a -a Build-A-Bear. You guys, I do this. Instead, all of these guys are dads. Isn't that incredible? Give it up for them on this salary, on this shit. Fucking unbelievable. I don't know how they do it. I don't have kids. I'm 39, never been married, no kids. It's fucking fantastic. (laughs) I love it. I don't know how they can afford it. I think if you're gonna have kids, you have to have a plan financially of how you're gonna take care of them, right? Because they're not cheap. Here's my plan, twins, yeah. I have to have twins. I don't care if it's two boys or two girls, but there has to be two of them. One of them, I'll feed fast food all day, every day, until it's morbidly obese. The other one, I put on a strict high protein diet, make them work out three times a day. Then I enroll them to be before and after models. And I think that's a great way for them to pay for their own college, honestly. I just look at every other aspect of my life and I wonder whether or not I'd be a good dad and all signs point to fucking no immediately. Like, I cook everything in a crock pot, everything. I cook everything in a crock pot. Roasts, throw it in there. Sandwiches, yeah, let's give it a shot. (laughs) Cooking in a crock pot's exactly like being a deadbeat dad. Like, you're there in the beginning doing everything you can, then you abandon it almost immediately, (laughs) only to return when it's made something of itself. You're like, oh, (laughs) what do you got for Papa? This is my winter look, everybody. Hipster burglar, that's what I'm going for. (laughs) Hide your Tegan and Sarah LPs, I'm coming for them. (laughs) I flew in today from home. I live in Denver now. Yeah, have you heard of it? Yeah, we have all the weed, all of it. (laughs) You guys have some of the weed. We have all of the weed. It's crazy, I just moved out there. I can't smoke the weed now. It's way too powerful, way too strong. It's not like the shitty Mexican brick weed I grew up smoking in Detroit. This shit is insane. It's got crystals and tapestries woven into it. I get too paranoid. Like if I smoke weed now, the circumstance has to be perfect. Like I have to be on my way to a concert or a birthday party for a dog or some shit, you know? Someplace I know I'm not about to be judged too harshly. (laughs) My roommate smokes weed nonstop, all day. He smokes weed all day. He's one of these guys, you know, he's a telemarketer. Anyway. (laughs) He smokes weed all day, and he's one of those people that knows what each strain does, and he has to tell you. He's like, oh, this one makes you sleepy. This one will make you good at origami. This one will bring back your (laughs) ex-girlfriend. I'm like, cool, which one makes you stop talking about this? (laughs) It's obnoxious. I'm learning a lot about weed though, I am. Like I learned this recently. Did you guys know that if you smoke weed in a kayak, you're automatically added to Dave Matthews' email list? Did you know? (laughs) I don't care if you get high, that doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all, but there's one type of stoner that I don't like being around anymore that I'm a little bit older. And that's that person when they do get high, they think it makes them smarter somehow. Do you know one of these dipshits? I have a friend like that. He's seen like two episodes of Cosmos on Netflix. Now every time he takes a bong rip, he turns into a fucking astronomer while we're hanging out. And I realize there's certain things I just can't do with him anymore while he's stoned. Like I can't watch movies with him anymore while he's high. He ruins it every time. Here's what happened recently. We were watching a movie together. He was smoking a joint. I'm completely sober. We were watching Return of the Jedi, all right? Now at one point in Return of the Jedi, a spaceship explodes and my buddy leans over with his stoner knowledge and he goes, you know that would never actually happen in real life. (laughs) You would never see a fireball in space because fire needs oxygen to survive and there's zero oxygen in space. So that shit would never happen. (laughs) 
And I was like, you know what? You're right. And while we're at it, I don't think those are real Ewoks either. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure those are just dwarves dressed up as bears. I'm surprised you could see that with your glaucoma. Notice I said dwarves in that joke. I did, I said dwarves. Do you know why I said dwarves? Because you can't say midget anymore. That's right, they took it back with their grubby little hands. You're not allowed. <laughs> You're not allowed to say midget anymore. Somebody was like, Mike, you have to call them little people. Mm, no, I fucking do not <laughs> have to call them little people. Little people? That sounds more insulting than midget to me. Little people sounds like something you give your children to play with to get them out of the house. Like, get out of here, go play with your little people, scram. <laughs> we live in amazing times. There's like 15 television shows about dwarves on right now. Yeah, and I will watch every single one of them. I wanna know what they're up to. You don't see them in the wild very often. <laughs> I watch every dwarf show, every single one. I don't watch them when they first air. I DVR them, they take up very little space on the... <clears throat> How many more dwarf jokes does this guy have? Six, hang in there, everybody. <laughs> My favorite dwarf show, it's the original dwarf show. It's called Little People, Big World. Have you ever seen it? Yeah, it's just a family of dwarves, but they're not all dwarves. Some of them are average height and they reach all the stuff on top of the fridge and then the dwarves, they scurry around on the floor and pick up nickels and skittles and shit, I think. I don't know, just whatever the vacuum leaves behind, I suppose. But the mom and the dad are full-on dwarfs. Full-on, you guys. And they got a divorce. What? A dwarf divorce? Regular divorce has to be tough. A dwarf divorce? How difficult is that? To divide everything up? You're like, are these socks mine, yours, or the babies? They don't know, it's a... so sad, right? I'm, I'm sad that they got a divorce, honestly, because I thought they were a positive family unit. You don't see that on reality television show a lot, you know? It's sad, that family, their last name, the Roloffs, which is probably how they got out of bed every morning. Just like, oh, funk, yeah. <laughs> ooh, a lot of thudding in that house, you know? No top bunk over there, yeah? I don't know why you wouldn't put slides everywhere in your home if you were a family of dwarves. Just like, ooh, like that's a good time. <laughs> Did you know that if you're a dwarf going down a slide legally, you have to say, Oy! Did you know that? It's in the Constitution, right next to no free health care. You guys, you gotta read the fine print. I'm sorry, was that too political for everybody? Mentioning the Constitution. Real quick, uh, what do you guys call him? Do you call him President Trump? Do you call him the Donald? I've just been calling him Queef Wellington. Is that okay? Hail to the queef, everybody, that's what I say. Or toupee fiasco, that's my other fun one. <laughs> I know, it's very chippy to talk about this administration. People get very angry when you mention Trump. They get pissed. I was in Florida doing shows. Ooh, doggy. They did not like it at all. And you could tell, because I would launch into a Trump joke and they would get pissed and they would be like, we're fucking out of here. And then they would all march out and you're like, what? <laughs> These new Nazis have no sense of humor. Look, if you're a Trump supporter and you're in here, I don't mean to offend you, okay? I want you to know that I would still date a Trump supporter. I would. I would date a Trump supporter because it seems like no matter how much I would fuck up, you would still adore me, so... People are like, oh, he doesn't like Trump. He must love Hillary Clinton. I don't. I don't have anything bad to say about her because I don't want to end up murdered, but... <laughs> not dumb. Do you guys think we should build a wall? Let's talk about this. Do you think we should build a wall? No. A wall's not going to keep Mexicans out, all right? Mexicans are crafty. That's what I like about Mexicans. <laughs> If you can fit 14 washers and dryers in the back of a Ford Ranger, I'm pretty sure 
you're clever enough to get over under a wall. America's like, we're gonna build a 10 foot wall. Mexico's like, cool, 11 foot ladders go on sale tomorrow. We need to treat Mexicans better in this country, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, we need to treat Mexicans better. And we need to start by letting the guy who plays the big guitar in the mariachi band sit down. Let him sit down. <laughs> Fuck, that thing's huge. <laughs> we live in very strange times, friends. Very strange times. Everybody's angry, nobody knows why. They're just ready to misspell it at you in all caps on Facebook all day. <laughs> I was talking with another comedian in New York. We were chatting about how difficult it is to do stand-up right now, given the current political climate. And he goes, you know, there might be a new civil war. There might be a new civil war. And I was like, shit, I hope not. That would tear this country apart. Our technology is way too advanced. We would never come back from a new civil war. Plus, I'm not sure I'm on the right side. Like, I know I'm on the right side of history because I'm fighting for civil rights, women's rights. I want our tax dollars to actually go toward us. I think if you fought in the military, you should never have to pay or wait for medical care again. <laughs> but as far as fighting a civil war, mm, my team's not looking so good, everybody. I tend to lean a little left, if you couldn't tell. That's the thing, if you're a Republican, you guys are ready for this shit. You've been stockpiling weapons with the NRA for quite some time. <laughs> there are crazy ass hillbillies with crossbows and Confederate flags slugging down Mountain Dew Code Red in a Walmart parking lot right now, ready to fuck shit up at the drop of a dime. You have the Klan on your side. The Klan. You have Nazis, actual Nazis are on your team. What do I have, millennials? Fuck! <laughs> I gotta go to war with millennials as my teammates? Great group of people, zero fucking skills. Let's be very clear about this. They can't even change a tire unless it's on a fixed geared bicycle. You're gonna swap out the treads of a tank in the middle of a combat zone? Are you fucking kidding me? What are you gonna strap a bayonet to the front of your iPhone and hopes that you get lucky and stab a Nazi while you're meandering through the gluten-free aisle of Whole Foods, <laughs> upvoting a Reddit article on gender equality? That's my fucking team? We are sunk, friends. <laughs> you're gonna take out the Third Reich with an ironic mustache and a cool vinyl collection? <laughs> Let's switch gears, dick pics. Do you take them, sir? I don't either, I have someone else take them for me. Sears, Sears portrait, that's where I go. You never took a dick pic in your life, have you, sir? Ever, right? On a rotary dial phone? Fucking impossible. It's true, guys are just sending their dick pics out there, all willy-nilly. They don't even give a shit if it's the right number. And I know because I've gotten dick pics in the morning from numbers I didn't recognize, like how much did I drink last night and how many friends did I make? <laughs> They're just sending them out there. They don't give a shit. Hey, our great-great-grandparents never sent a dick pic. I'll tell you that, do you know the amount of work that would have fucking taken? <laughs> to send a dick pic back in the day? You'd have to hire a photographer to set up a 400-pound camera. He'd have that weird cape thing you'd have to throw over his head. He'd have that flash with the fucking gunpowder in it. Just for flu, a fucking plume of smoke would go into the air. You'd have to find a nice rock to put your leg up on, like Captain Morgan, so he could zoom in real tight on your junk. It would take like four months to develop the tin type. You'd get that back. You'd have to write a letter to the woman. A letter. Dear Edith, here's my hog. I hope this moistens your thicket. While I'm away pan sifting for gold. See you in eight months if I don't die of a dynamite explosion. You'd have to seal it up, put it in an envelope. You'd have to put a stamp on it, a stamp. Fucking currency was involved. Then you'd have to find a guy who owned a mule willing to run it 10,000 feet up a mountainside to a place that looked like a cracker barrel to deliver it to a woman that looks like every ghost you've ever seen in every horror movie. She'd open it up, pow, dick pic. Not anymore, sir, snap, bang, here's my cock. Enjoy, chivalry's fucking dead. It's fucking dead, everybody. I 
don't even think you ladies like dick pics. Do you even like them? No. no. Why the balls? That's why. <laughs> you don't like the balls, and I don't blame you. Balls are fucking disgusting. They are. That's why now whenever I'm asked for a dick pic, I put my balls in a Crown Royal bag. That's what I do. <laughs> like a gentleman. It looks like I won them at the Ren Fair, you know? M'lady, that's what I type in text. M'lady. I was talking to a female friend of mine recently. She goes, I got this dick pic the other day. This guy's dick was enormous. And I was like, how do you know? I was like, could have just been the angle he was holding the phone. She goes, no, 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 I know this guy's dick was enormous because he took the dick pic and his dick was next to an iPad and his dick was bigger than the iPad. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, do they still make the shuffle? Remember the shuffle? That's what, <laughs> that's what I need. Or a golf pencil. I'm gonna catfish it with my dong. Yeah. <laughs> this is a fun job though. We, we travel all over the country doing this. It can get a little lonely sometimes, you know? Like I travel a lot. There's certain things in my life that I wish I could have, but I just can't because we travel so much to do this. Like, I'd love to have a pet, a dog specifically, you know? I can't, too much responsibility. Somebody was like, Mike, what about a cat? Nope, I'm allergic, that's out. They were like, Mike, what about a hairless cat? <laughs> what? A hairless cat? Have you seen those fucking things? <laughs> what do you even do with a hairless cat? You just rub moisturizer on it while you try to avoid eye contact? <laughs> you can't snuggle that thing, right? It's like a scrotum with fangs. You're gonna bring that kind of evil into your house? You know what I would do with a hairless cat? I would get super stoned and then I would put little boots on it and convince the neighborhood kids that it's a goblin. That's just me though. I'm fun. Here's a quick question. Ladies, cunnilingus, yay or nay? Are we still doing this? If you don't know what it is, ask Surrey. Cunnilingus. I'm talking about pussy eating. Is this still on the roster? Or is everybody growing up their bush because we're all retro millennials now? <laughs> Look, if you're not into cunnilingus, all that I ask is just tell us. Just let us know, all right? I was with this lovely lady I met two weeks ago on Craigslist. We were back at my hotel <laughs> listening to Sade. I had a few Yankee candles lit. Things are heating up. I'm on my way downtown to put in some work, right? I always double down on the oral because my dick is garbage, so. <laughs> I'm on my way down there to do the deed, right? I get into position, she clamps her thighs down on both of my ears, just clamps them down like a vice grip, right? I'm horse lipping it, I'm trying to get in there, I tongue sticking out. It's like trying to eat ice cream through prison bars. Let us know. Just let us know. I put pants on immediately after sex. Do any of you guys do that? Do you put pants on, fellas, as soon as you're done having sex? Your dick has never looked worse than it does post-sex. It looks awful. Guys, we look terrible after sex. We do. Ladies, you look so amazing after sex. You're laying there, you're covered in sweat, you have that disappointed look on your face. <laughs> Fellas, we look terrible, and your dick has never looked worse. Really. Three minutes ago, your dick was cool as fuck. Right? It was all hard and powerful. It had a vein going through it, like a politician that didn't want to answer a question, just like, Aah. Post-sex dick? The worst. Oh, it looks so sad. It's just laying on your thigh like a drunk outside of a bar, <laughs> drooling all over the street. His friends abandon him. Put pants on. Get him an Uber. <laughs> I'm wearing a condom right now. That's how excited I was to fly out to... Yeah, that's what I do before every show. I take a shower, I towel off, I splash some scope on it, I throw on a rubber, then I go meet those mean streets of Green Bay like a champion of the night. <laughs> yeah, splash a little scope on it, fellas. Put a little mouthwash down there. Yeah, because she might forget how shitty you are in bed, but she'll remember a minty dick, and that's just a... <laughs> 
life hack from your new pal, Mike Stanley. How do you know when to stop using condoms? Good question, sir, I'm glad you asked. First off, when they're full, take it off, throw it out, put on a... <laughs> My last girlfriend was like, Mike, we don't have to use condoms anymore because I have an IED inside of me. <laughs> I was like, you have a roadside bomb inside of you right now? Is your puss an ISIS? What the fuck's that? <laughs> I reported her, throw her over the wall. That's what I said. I haven't seen her since. I don't know what you ladies are into anymore. I have no idea. I'm out there in the field playing around. I was in the 7-Eleven parking lot the other day, smoking a cigarette, talking to the local kids about a timeshare, and uh, <laughs> this dude pulled up in a Ferrari, a Ferrari. He pulls up, doors open like this, boom, he gets out, he was wearing Crocs. <laughs> I was like, whoa, save some pussy for the rest of us, would you? <laughs> you fucking stallion, what are you doing? I'm trying to take better care of myself now that I'm getting older. I go to the gym every day, two hours every day. Yeah, 20 minutes of that's just me untangling my earbuds. But after that, <laughs> why are they so goddamn tangly? You ever get your earbuds tangled up in your keys? You're just like, fuck, I don't know. I guess I'm calling into work today. <laughs> I don't have time to solve this puzzle the universe just threw in my face. I will, I'll go to the gym for two hours. My friends are like, Mike, that's crazy. What do you want to look like, a bodybuilder? Yeah. <laughs> a female bodybuilder. I think that's a reasonable goal considering my size. I'm not that big. I don't want to look like a male bodybuilder. Are you kidding me? Those guys look crazy. Go find your neck, dick face. Are you serious? <laughs> female bodybuilders, are they attractive? What do you think? Yeah, right? Some guys are like, oh, their clits are too big. I'm like, yeah, that's a fucking foolproof way to zero in on one. What are you... Oh, I'm sorry, are there some big clitted people in this section over here? You used to carry them around in a wheelbarrow everywhere you go? I didn't mean to offend you. I like a strong woman, you know? Like a big, strong woman. I like the type of chick that'll put a permanent kink in your crank with one Kegel, you know what I mean? <laughs> Dent me, that's what I say. Dent me, mama. Put some press on that puss. Make me feel something for once. I am dead inside, you know? <laughs> a female bodybuilder? I would date one, absolutely. Think of all the practical uses for that. Like, babe, this phone book is too big to fit in the drawer. Can you tear it in half for me really quick? You're so strong. That's sexy. I want to come home from work and have someone so excited to see me that when I walk through the door, they pick me up. And they prop me up onto one of those like kitchen islands where I'm just like, oof, oof. She grabs the nape of my neck and starts aggressively tongue kissing me like, ah, ah. I'm like, I want to watch a scary movie with you tonight because you make me feel safe. I just want to feel safe, you guys. I want someone to pick me up and flip me upside down in a standing 69 like this. Like, ah, ah. Oh, you guys don't have dreams in Green Bay? You don't, you don't have a bucket list? Just fucking, ah. My legs are flying all over the place. My toes are getting caught in the ceiling fan. Like, brrr, I'm upside down. I'm like, woo! Get it, babe. I love it. It's like Six Flags. Yeah. I buy my condoms at the sex toy store. That's where I go. I don't buy them at 7-Eleven with a Slurpee, okay? Because that's a suspicious purchase. That's how you end up on a list on the internet. I go to the sex toy store. Ladies, do you go to the sex toy store? Yeah, the rest of you are lying? That's cool. I go to the sex toy store. I know you ladies go to the sex toy store because everything in the sex toy store is for you, ladies. Everything. Guys, what do we have? DVDs? Oh, great. 
You ever try to put your dick in a DVD? It hurts. It hurts a lot. Everything in the sex toy store is for you, ladies, and you can buy and have whatever you want, and no one makes fun of you. There was no humiliation. You can buy the craziest device, bring it into work the next day, show it off like an edible arrangement in a company meeting. Like, hey, girls, check this out. And they're all like, fuck yeah, I wanna go on my lunch break and get one too. <laughs> that thing looks fucking sweet. You have an entire wall of shit to pick from in the sex toy store, and I can't stop staring at that wall. Everything looks like a pickle with nubs and ridges and ball bearings that spin around at 700 miles per hour. Everything has tentacles and bunny ears and dolphin tails, which is bullshit because I don't even have that anatomically on my body. How am I supposed to compete with this thing? That's the thing, fellas. If you see, they don't even look like dicks anymore. They don't, like a real dick is gross. We all know that. It just looks like a bunch of night crawlers stuffed into a Ziploc bag that's being squeezed real tight. Not these things, they're gorgeous. They're all like teal and purple and blue and all these beautiful colors of the rainbow. They have all these weird phalanges sticking off of them. Everything looks like it was built by Dr. Seuss and then dropped to the bottom of the ocean where it learned all about female anatomy and then James Cameron found it on a deep sea adventure and brought it up top and you're allowed to pop that 2,000 leagues into your poontang and throw a party and no one says shit. No one makes fun of you at all. But one guy, one guy who's alone on the road and stays in hotels by himself all the time buys one pocket pussy and oh my. Look at the pervert, everybody. Check out the pervert. It's like, what? I'm a pervert? What's my other option? Call down to the front desk, order up a cantaloupe, have it sent up to the room, drill a hole in it, throw it in the microwave for eight seconds, pull it out, toss some sour cream in there, draw a little red mouth around the hole with a sharpie, put a wig on top, duct tape it to the desk at waist height, pound away a few times, pop off, take a nap, wake up, do it all over again. What do you do with the evidence? Eat it or throw it out? I don't give a shit. That's what a pervert would do. That's what a pervert would do. So leave me and my pocket pussy alone. Everyone's like, why would you put sour cream in there? Because I like it supreme, that's why. Green Bay, you guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for supporting this cause tonight. I'm Mike Stanley, enjoy yourselves. We'll see you in the lobby. Have a great night, thank you.